Hello everybody, welcome to the Netbird channel. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is showing you probably the very best way to remote connect into your Synology NAS. Whether if you have a little disk station at home or you're trying to connect to your company's enterprise equipment, this is one of the simplest and secure ways to go about it, and that is using Netbird. Yes, you could use Synology Quick Connect, but oh boy, that is painfully slow. Or you could just open up some network ports and access DSM that way, but that is not the most secure way to go about it. With Netbird, you can establish direct, secure, encrypted peer-to-peer -peer connections between various devices on your network, external networks, people remoting into devices with a full peer-to-peer -peer mesh, or you can set up a routing peer, which essentially any peer you set up can act as, meaning that once we install Netbird on our Synology NAS, we could set it up to access other devices, other IoT devices, other servers that are running on that same network. Better yet, it is completely open source and self-hostable, or if you don't want to go through that work, there is a free tier on the Netbird website and some other business tiers with more enterprise focused features starting at $5 a month. Now, the first step to setting up any peer is to go to the Netbird dashboard here. You can see I already have a few peers set up, but what we're going to do is generate a setup key for our Synology. So I'm going to go ahead and click on setup keys and right here, I'm going to create a new setup key. I'm just going to call this Synology NAS and I'm only going to use it once. So I'm not going to be making it reusable here. So I'll just go ahead and create the setup key and there it is. Now I'm going to keep it right here because now we need to go over to the Synology machine and do a couple prerequisites just to make sure that we're all set up and ready to go. And here it is. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that my user has administrative access. If it's the default user, you should be good to go. But if I go over here, go under users and groups, this right here is me. If I go ahead and click on edit, go to user groups, you could see right here under the administrators group, there's a check, so I'm good to go. Now, the second thing we're gonna need to do is make sure we have access to a terminal because we're gonna need to run just a single line command to go ahead and get Netbird installed. So to do that, we are going to go down to terminal and SNMP. Click on that, we're gonna check the box that says enable SSH service and then click on apply. Gives us a little warning here, I do recommend you read this, so we're gonna hit okay. Those changes have been applied. So now you're gonna to want to find the IP address of your server. Usually you can find it right here in the address bar. Alternatively, if we just go to network and then network interface here, we can see all of our ports and we can see this LAN one is connected. We're on 134. So what we're gonna to want to do is open up a terminal and actually SSH into this Synology NAS. So to SSH in, we're just type SSH, our username, obviously replacing this with your own, and then our IP address. So mine's at 134 with a dot right there and hit enter. Here, it's our server. So I'm just gonna say yes. And then we are going to type in our password and then boom, just like that, you could see I am in our Synology NAS. So now it's at this point that we could head over to the installation documentation here and we're gonna grab this command. It says install with one command, give that a copy. And then we're just gonna drop it into our terminal here. We're gonna paste it and you could see it ran. It's asking for our password because it's gonna be moving some things around, installing some stuff, setting up some services and boom, just like that, it's done. So Netbird's installed. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is head back over here to our setup key, give this a copy and we're gonna connect our Netbird peer to our management panel. And to do that, we're just gonna type in Netbird up dash K telling it we're gonna input our key, paste in that key, hit enter, and now it should say connected, which you can see right here, which now if I load up our management dashboard, we should see our new Synology NAS peer right here. And you can see it has its very own unique IP address for our Netbird network. So you could use that for peer-to-peer -peer connections or just direct connections. And we have a nice little DNS name here that you could also change as well. But with Synology, there is one additional thing that we are going to need to do. And that is to create a little startup script to ensure that when the Synology NAS reboots, it loads up the proper modules and everything that Netbird needs to run efficiently. So to do that, we can head back over to Synology. We're in the control panel here and we're gonna to want to go down to 
the task scheduler. We're gonna hit create and we're gonna create a triggered task as a user defined script. Go ahead and click on that. We're gonna give it a task name. So I could just call this something like netbird start. For the user, we're gonna to wanna to switch this over to root because it's going to be doing some things with the ton device and service, which that requires root privileges. You'll see that when I go ahead and paste it on in, make sure it's enabled. Event is going to be on boot up. And for the task settings, this is where we can paste in our script. And that is simply in the documentation. Go to the installation docs. The script is right here, ready to go. You can see it makes the directory for dev net, sets the proper permissions for the ton, and it loads in the module. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a copy, head back over to Synology and just paste it on in. So there we go. At this point, all we need to do is click okay. We're gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask for our password once again to make sure since we are running this as root. So we're going to hit submit and there we go. It's ready to go. One thing that we could do real quick is ensure that we are able to have the logs just in case if something goes wrong. So for that, with this selected, we're going to go over to settings. You're going to want to check the box that says save output media and select a folder. I just have one here I created called logs. So select that save it. And I'm not going to reboot my whole NAS, but just to test to make sure that the script is working, I am going to do a manual run real quick. So let's hit run task and okay. So now that the task is ran, if I go ahead and click on this, go over to action and click view result. You can see here the current status is normal. We have the times, a manual run, the script, and for the standard output and errors, there is no data, meaning no errors. So we're good to go. So again, that was our quick guide on setting up Netbird on your Synology NAS. You can set this up on a wide variety of devices, including Linux, Windows, Mac OS. There is just a variety of ways to go about this, a variety of ways to use this. And if you'd like to learn more and check it out, check out the official website, netbird.io and the documentation to dive into all the different use cases, how it works and much more. Also, this is the first time you're seeing me on the channel, so I'll be making a lot more content. So do make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. We're gonna be going over home lab use cases, enterprise setups, general videos on like overlay networks and zero trust. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and good bye.